This is Leo from the PC Security Channel, and you are watching the private evaluation of Chasm, a secure computing platform based on Docker-based containerization. This video is going to focus on the scenario of secure access to corporate resources, but before we get into the details, I just want to go over the idea of containerized desktop infrastructure. The essential concept here is to have work computers without having physical computers. So people working remotely would be able to log in, use corporate resources in a secure environment that is controlled by the business, while at the same time being able to do so on any system of their choice on a laptop, portably. This is essentially the admin UI, and we will spin up a couple of instances just so you can see what it's like. It takes a couple of seconds for the session to load, and boom, you are now in the initiated instance. As you can see, this is a full desktop. We've got various applications pre-installed and this can be customized as I understand based on your requirements. Here we've got only Office. So this is an Office application that you can use for documents, spreadsheet presentations. And we're going to look at how these files can be shared within the organization securely without opening up the window to malicious attacks. First though, I also want to show you how you can have multiple instances. So if we go back to home, we can easily spin up a different instance, for example, the desktop deluxe. And now we effectively have both of these running simultaneously. If we like, of course, we can duplicate the tab, go to control panel, home, go back to our accounting desktop, and now, as you can see, we've got both these systems side by side. Now we're going to go over to the accounting department account to show you how you can have restricted setups for specific departments. And as you can see, we can only open the accounting desktop from here. And we can also enable certain restrictions for security purposes. For example, we can have website restrictions set up using a web filter. So if we go back to the admin interface, you can see we've got various options here for different users, groups, agents, managers, zones. And down here, we've got a web filter option and we've already got a policy for accounting. And if we click on edit, you can see that we have a domain blacklist. We have safe search enabled and categorization of websites. So any of the categories that are set to deny will not be accessible from the accounting instance. And we're going to run a test to show you just that. So now we're in the accounting desktop and now I'm gonna open up a browser, navigate to the website in the domain blacklist. And as you can see, we get access denied because it's rejected by our administrator policies. Similarly, say, for example, we've blocked access to day trading and stock investment websites because, well, you don't want your employees doing that during their business hours. But say I want to try, so I'm going to go for day trading. Again, it's going to be blocked. We also have adverts blocked, so that's a category as well. So now let's talk more about these systems and what they allow you to do. There are quite a few sharing options and all of them can be accessed via the control panel, which is nice and handy located on the left side. We've got access to audio, microphone. The video section controls the responsiveness of the UI, which I have to mention is really good considering we are essentially accessing this remotely. That is possible because each of these are not full stack virtual machines. They're all Docker instances. And I've been quite impressed by the responsiveness of some of these systems. So as long as you're happy with the Linux environment, you should have a good experience using them. We also have access to the machine clipboard. So for example, if we go ahead and copy something, we can just copy it and now it's going to appear in the clipboard. For sharing between systems, you have your shares folder, and this can have locked access to company policies, documents they don't want to be modified, and then also open folders like the one here where you can actually save files. I can demonstrate that by just copying this, pasting this in accounting, but if we try to do the reverse, that's not going to work because you don't have access to paste to this location. 
Similarly, if we want to upload or download files from the host system, so we can send files from the physical machine that is running this instance and vice versa. That is disabled for the accounting department as a security measure, but I'll go back to the main instance, the admin instance, and show you how you can do that. So say there's a file that I want to physically download to my main system. All I would have to do is copy that, put it into the downloads folder, and then I would be able to access it using the control panel. So if I go under downloads, now this file is accessible. And if I click on it, it's just going to get downloaded through the browser here. Similarly, if I want to transfer a file from my physical system onto this chasm instance, I would click on upload, drag and drop the file that I want. And once that's done, I can go into the system open uploads, and boom, the file is there. Now say if we were to access a malicious website, so we're going to load up VX Vault. And we'll visit a malicious domain. It's recognized by Chrome, but we're going to go ahead and allow the download say if the user is unaware, keep dangerous file, and now we have it downloaded on the system. However, this file cannot really do any damage because the system is self-contained. And even if it were to be an exploit that would be able to infiltrate the system, it would be of little utility to the attacker because it wouldn't be able to spread to different systems in the organization, wouldn't be able to infect the network, and it would basically just die when the instance is destroyed and it's not kept persistent. And I can show you how that happens. So if we go ahead and click on destroy, now that session is gone. The data, however, if it's stored in any of the shared locations, is going to persist. And that is how you can access corporate resources securely. So our thoughts with regards to this approach is that it's quite effective from a security perspective, as long as you're able to live with the limitations. A lot of businesses will want to use software like Office 365. These days, it's a lot more feasible because you can always use the web versions of different types of software. There's a lot more you can do with the browser than you could, say, five or 10 years ago. And that really makes it a potentially viable alternative that bypasses all of the headache you have to go through to secure your corporate resources in a traditional environment, massively reduces the attack surface and allows for that zero trust infrastructure. So those are our thoughts. Make sure you check out the other videos in this series. We hope you found this video helpful. Please like and subscribe if you did. If you'd like to work with us, consult, do similar evaluations, feel free to reach out at the pcsecuritychannel.com. Thank you for watching. This is Leo, and as always, stay informed, stay secure.